Vaginas are absolute magic. And Ali is here to give them the respect they deserve. That means shame-free supplements made with clinically studied ingredients to keep your pH in check. And your pleasure a priority. Put yourself on top. Go to Ollie.com today. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Brooks Running has a new shoe for you runners out there. Did you hear that? Better turn up your volume. In fact, turn it up to the max. Introducing the all-new Ghost Max. It's got all kinds of things to make your knees and ankles feel protected, like Max Cushion, Max Soft Landings with DNA Loft V2 Foam, and Max Smooth Rides with their Glide Roll Rocker. Feel better on your run with Ghost Max. Learn more at brooksrunning.com. You're listening to the Food Heals Podcast. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben and Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately. All right, welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining me. I'm Allison Melody. We know the gut is the second brain, and I know this conversation will blow your mind away. You'll learn how to get off your acid and detox your way back to health. That's with Dr. Daryl Geoffrey. He is a highly sought after gut health and inflammation specialist with over two decades of experience in the field. He overcame a lifelong sugar addiction. Don't worry, I'll ask him about it. In addition to having his own gut and mold toxicity issues, he knows firsthand what it takes to overcome adversity and challenges in the pursuit of superior health. Dr. Daryl, as he is affectionately known by, is the founder of Kick Acid Enterprises, a virtual nutritional testing and coaching platform focused on getting to the root cause of inflammation by restoring, balancing, and strengthening the microbiome, what he calls gut fitness. He's author of the best-selling book, Get Off Your Acid, and he just released a new book called Get Off Your Sugar, Burn the Fat, Crush Your Cravings, and Go From Stress Eating to Strength Eating. And our conversation was so good that I asked him to stay a little bit longer and chat some more with me, so this became a two-part episode. So let's dive right in for part one and stay tuned next time for part two. Roll it, Roxy. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. He is the founder of Kick Acid Enterprises. I love that title. Please welcome Dr. Joffrey to the show. Dr. Daryl Joffrey. Welcome, Dr. Daryl. <laughs> Thank you so much, Allison. Great to be on and uh, really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm so happy to have you. So you are a highly sought after gut health and inflammation specialist. You overcame a sugar addiction, which so many of us can relate to. I'm now sugar light. I'm not sugar free, but I would, I was addicted to sugar my whole life. You've overcome gut and mold toxicity issues. I just had mold in my house. We have so much wow. to talk about, but wow. <laughs> take me back to how you got started and why you got into health and healing. By the way, I love the sugar light. That's the first time I've heard that. It's awesome. <laughs> but we definitely don't want to go sugar free because when they go sugar free, they're throwing in artificial sweeteners, which is actually worse. They've just been labeled potential carcinogens. We've been talking about that for years, but you know, but I love, I love the approach. I love the approach. I'm sure we'll get into sugar, but um, yeah, it's like if it says gluten free, well, what did you replace it with? Sugar free, what did you replace it with? It's probably worse. I want the gluten back. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. But uh, no, for me, it's all about the gut. You know, gut health is is critically important. You know, it was 2014. It's a perfect fall Sunday afternoon. I'm in New York City. It's one week before the New York City Marathon, which is where I used to live. Now I'm in Naples, Florida. I've been wanting to run the marathon for like 20 years. It's always been like a dream of mine. And today I'm on my final training run in Central Park. I'm literally picturing myself crossing the finish line. My you know, wife, Chelsea, is going to be there. My six-month-old son, Braden, was just born. So he'll, of course, be there. And my mom and dad. When all of a sudden I get a call, my phone starts vibrating in my pocket. So I take it out and I take a look. It's a missed call from my brother, Brandon. So just did a crazy selfie, mid-stride, sent it back to him, kept on going. Literally, it must have been like no more than 10 seconds later, phone starts vibrating again. Pull it out. Then I see the words, call emergency. And Allison, oh. like 
right in that moment, immediately I knew something happened to my mom and dad because they were driving down from Vermont, you know, today, and they were ultimately coming down to see me run the marathon. So they were on 91 South, which is near Hartford. It's uh, maybe about an hour and a half uh, away from the city. And my dad was always the driver. My mom was in the passenger seat and she was actually knitting a sweater for my son, Brayden, that she was going to give to him when they came down. And all of a sudden she feels the car veering off to the left. Oh my God. Yeah. There's one huge problem, a concrete divider. So as she looks over at my father, he's literally passed out against the window driving 70 miles per hour. As the car goes up the concrete divider, she literally grabs his leg off of the accelerator, pulls it off. The car comes back down. Car goes back up as she pulls the keys out of the ignition. Car oh. car crashes, and now I'm in a zip car heading up to Hartford from New York City because obviously in New York we don't have cars. Uh, it's all about zip cars. So as yeah. I'm driving up, you know, as a doctor, I'm trying to figure out like why did my dad pass out? Was it a heart attack? Was it a stroke? Maybe it was an aneurysm. So when oh. I get there, the doctor tells me your dad has esophageal cancer. What? Yeah, I'm like that's exactly what I said. I'm like what? esophageal cancer. Like you're kidding. Obviously, you know, I was in shock. So three days later, we're at the top specialist in esophageal cancer at Sloan Kettering, you know, a few blocks away from where I live in New York city. And he tells us good news. It hasn't spread yet. And you know, it's usually caused by too much acid in the stomach. We'll come back okay. to that later. And it's yeah, so crazy yeah. because my whole like family looks down at me because I'm wearing this shirt boldly that says, get off your acid because that night I'm giving a keynote address at like a big wellness convention in the city. Um, and that's literally what my, t my talk was going to be about. It's about the dangers of acidity in the body, inflammation, and how that creates things like chronic inflammatory diseases. Obviously, right. heart disease, cancer, which, by the way, now has overtaken heart disease in 21 states as the number one cause of cancer. All oh, yes, God. it's big. Alzheimer's, the fourth cause of death, paral um, parallels inflammation of the brain. Um, but this whole time, I never gave my dad's dry cough a second thought, which he had for years. So Allison, after this, I became a health investigator, like any good investigator does. Literally, I just followed the evidence, you know, calling every expert, looking at every study. How did this happen? How did this get like this? What led up to it? Why didn't we link and investigate that dry cough he was having for years? And most importantly, what do we need to do to reverse it? So as a result yeah. of all that, I became a true gut expert. I mean, I thought I was an expert before all that happened, but now I really learned what it was to be like a true gut expert. And three years later, I'm driving up to Connecticut to see my dad. It's my birthday. And, um, you know, when I see him, he lost a lot of weight. He doesn't look good. You can tell he's losing the fight. Um, so we had a really nice day, you know, celebrating my birthday with him and my family. And I'm not even back in the city two hours when I get a call from my brother. Dad's mm -hmm. in a coma. He's on life support. Oh. So I take the train back. We all gather around my dad in the hospital and you know, he was unconscious, but I knew he heard me and I'm holding his hand. And I said, dad, I'm so sorry. I couldn't save you. And then I made a vow to him and I said, I'm going to do everything possible in my power to prevent, to prevent, you know, as many other people from going through this and literally suffering the way that you did. And then he passed. So oh, that's cry. no, but yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. And, but that's, that's why I do this. That's why I'm so passionate. The story was at first about me and my sugar addiction, but now it's become something so much bigger. And, you know, my goal is to help as many people understand what we all need to do to protect our gut so that a loved one never finds themselves in that position. Like, you know, like I did. And again, um, the gut it, it's under assault. So it's never been more important to take care of the gut. Dr. Daryl, we are the same person. I lost first my mother to a long battle with cancer and then my mm. father. And at the time, I was not the marathon running doctor that you were. I was a little girl, 20 years old, that knew nothing about health, wellness, and all, all we knew was follow doctor's orders. And all yeah. doctor's orders were, mm. were prescribing uh, medication, chemotherapy, and radiation. And I saw the cure kill them before the cancer That's killed exactly them. That's exactly right. And that's when I started to get passionate about this. And that's when I started to examine, well, what's really going on? Why don't we have the answers? And why are people dying way too young of these chronic degenerative lifestyle related preventable diseases? So I'm so wow, wow. excited to have you on the and, show today. And I'm so, even... Yeah, I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. But I know that has sharpened your sword and that's, you know, put you on this mission that you're on doing everything that you're doing and getting the word out there. And um, it's, it's never been more important for people to understand this. You, you nailed on the head. People are living longer, but they're dying younger. Um, I mean, it's just so sad what's happening 
You know, we make up 5% of the world's population. We spend over 50% of the world's money on what they call medical care, which I call sick care because there's, it, it's, it's obviously a sick care system. Um, yeah. And the problem is, is if you look at like the, the latest ranking from the WHO, which I don't give a lot of credibility to, but anyway, we rank 72nd in world health. I can't even name 71 countries ahead of us. So obviously right. we're doing something very wrong. We're not addressing the root cause of why people get sick in the first place. And what's the root system of the body? It's the gut. Hippocrates said it best, look to the gut. That's where all disease begins. But how many doctors are talking about the gut? No one. Well, some of us are, right? I am at least. Um, but like, Thank mo- God for some of yes, you. Yes, right yeah. on. Amen to that. But like most allopathic doctors, and there's some good ones, right? But like most of them aren't talking about that. And they're looking at all these downstream problems and symptoms. And literally, it's like the, it's like the fire's going off in the house or the apartment, and they're just snipping the wire to the alarm. The fire's going to take you out. Maybe you feel better. Maybe you don't from the drugs that they're giving you. But again, you don't have a deficiency in the drugs. You have a deficiency in nutrients or your body's toxic. That's the cause of all dis-ease. When I say dis-ease with a hyphen, which is lack of balance, lack of harmony, the more lack of balance in our body that turns to disease. It's like a plant. You know, plant gets sick. The plant gets sick. You know, most doctors' alternatives, give it drugs, give it surgery. But no, it's like, give it water, give it sunlight, give it nutrients. But here's the yes. problem. That plant can still die. Why? Because we didn't realize the gas station next door was leaking toxins into the root system of that plant. So no matter what you did that was good for the plant, that strengthened the plant, right? Like a strengthening diet. We got nothing replaces your diet. You have you can't supplement your way out of a bad diet as, as important supplements are. That's at the core of it. It's the same thing with the plant. But that plant was toxic. So detoxification is actually more important than the nutrients that we're giving our body. And I'm talking about detoxing the gut because these stuff pathogens and inflammation, ultimately that's what's taking us out. I feel like I want to play a clap track right now. Just like, amen. Yes. Like, <laughs> Let's get it going. <laughs> you, can, you can do that if you want. <laughs> I can insert it in post. Um, but I could not agree with you more. And I love your passion. And because it, I feel the same way, like just speaking to you, my body is like lifted and excited because I just want people to absorb this information and understand like we can take our health back into our own hands right and on. stop outsourcing it to others. Stop outsourcing it to doctors who don't know better. It's no fault of their own most of the that's time right. that they're not trained in gut health, right? right. But you figured it out. And so take us through some of that. Like if I'm starting from scratch and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have a chronic disease. I have a sugar addiction. What do I, what do I need to do to get started with my own health and healing to start that detoxification process? Like what's step one, what do you recommend for us to find the root cause for us to heal ourselves? I just got chills because I get so excited about this. Like, oh, where do you want to, where where should we start? Because there's a million, I know, I know. (laughs) but we want to keep it simple. You know, it's like, we we don't want to overwhelm anybody. And I said something, I mean, my mantra is test, don't guess. Um, I think it's so important that we do test the gut. And that's something that, that, that I do with all my clients, no matter what their downstream issues are. I don't care if it's hormonal imbalances, cancer, they're having overweight issues, skin issues, uh, reproductive issues. Those downstream issues, if you really kind of trace it back upstream, you're going to find that the gut is really where this uh, inflammation is coming from. So you always want to test. But let's kind of go beyond that and just start and keeping it simple. And it's something I said before, which is you can't supplement your way out of a, out of a bad diet or mm-hmm. what we call a crap diet, C-R-A-P, completely refined and processed. Or we can mm-hmm. call it the sad diet, the standard American diet, which is very, right. very sad. Or I like to call it the WMD diet, which is the weapons of mass destruction diet. And yeah. that stands for wheat, meat, dairy, and the S is sugar. Now, obviously, yes. we know, yeah, and, we, and we, can, we can add some more into that. We can add another S, which is stress which is the biggest one. We can add on inflammatory fats like seed oils and things like that. But let's just stick to kind of some simple things, which is um, we want to stop toxifying our body. And we, gluten, you mentioned before, it's like the the big gluten-free phrase. There's nothing free about gluten-free. It's like we got to go grain-free. That's the key. But meet yourself where you're at. So for example, um, a grain would be something like brown rice. But I'm not sure if people are aware that brown rice is actually worse for you than white rice. How crazy is that? Like right. we, we grew up thinking that brown rice was the be all of health foods, right? But brown right. rice has 80 times more arsenic than white rice. It's obvi- obviously has more lectins because it's the full seed, all three of the layers. So obviously white rice has nothing nutrition. It's a pure starch. So it's better than the brown rice, but what's the best option? Cause that's my approach, which is like, there's foods we should never have. There's a better option. Then there's a best option. So the better or best option would be something like, quinoa or wild rice. Quinoa is a seed, wild rice is a grass. So that would be a better option that's very similar. So 
um, it's really about finding better versions of the foods that you love. So you're not feeling that like deprivation approach, by the way, especially around the holidays, it's critical, you know, you got to get into the swaps. Um, so wheat's a big one and, you know, bread and pasta, all the stuff that we love, um, you know, two slices of bread is the equivalent of having um, the amount of sugar as like a candy bar and a half. It's crazy. So, so that's because it converts the sugar in the body. That's exactly right. Yep. Exactly right. And when I say, uh, meat as a second one, like I eat animal protein, I think it's important for us to have a little bit of animal protein, but the problem is, is the average American is consuming five times that amount. And I'll tell you what the right amount should be. And when that happens, it actually turns to sugar in your body. Again, okay. sugar is one of the worst things because that turns to lactic acid. Um, it obviously drives up inflammation. It's going to cause glycation in your brain, which is placking similar to Alzheimer's. So sugar, we know it's bad. Yeah. But believe it or not, too much protein actually creates sugar in the body. That's the thing. It's like, uh, so I'm plant-based. And the biggest question I, I get is, where do you get your protein? Where do you get your protein? When did people start dying from this horrible protein deficiency? Because I've never heard about people in the hospital that are dying from protein deficiency from not eating animal fat. What I'm hearing about is them dying from cancer and heart disease right. from eating too much things such as animal fat. <laughs> That's exactly right. They actually did studies on this. And it was a study of 72,000 people. And it was looking at the nutrition levels of um, obviously, um, animal protein, uh, omnivores, um, vegetarians and vegans. And what they found was that all groups got the necessary amount of protein that they needed. And the, uh, vegetarian vegan group was literally only about 10% lower than animal protein. So we don't have to worry about malnutrition anymore. Right. Like that was, that was an issue years ago. That's issues in other countries. It's not an issue here. My problem. And I love that you said plant-based, not vegan because vegan is, is this, you can have vegan Twinkies, right? But plant you can have Yes, exactly. You can have vegan Oreos. That's and right. that's what I say, because when I say vegan, it gets so, so many people have a judgment about what that means. I don't even say it at a restaurant because people go, oh God, she can't have bread. And I'm like, it's not the same as gluten-free. Like, don't even talk to me about the words. So I just say plant-based because people are like, oh, she's probably leans more vegetarian. But yeah, I don't eat the Oreos. Right. I do leave I do leave room for my one vice, which is my wine, there. which I have in moderation. But that's how I approach it. And everyone's going to be different. That's exactly right. So it's about finding your balance. It's about really figuring out what your unique bioindividuality is. And listen, I married a vegan. Like my, my wife was vegan when I met her. So it's really about kind of cluing into your body, seeing how you feel, knowing what your food sensitivities are. Another thing that we test yes. for, but I'm going to tell you because I do a lot of inflammation testing and vegans actually test higher, more inflamed than meat eaters. And when I say that it's because pointing out what you said, Allison, is that when, and I have so much respect for, for vegans and vegetarians. I literally, I love animals myself. Um, and I have so much respect for the philosophy, but what happens with most vegans, and vegetarians is they stop eating meat. They replace it with crappy carbs and crappy carbs. Yeah. And that's what I try not to do my very, very best. Cause it is easy to do at a restaurant, but that's the difference. It's like being very, very conscious about if you are plant-based, if you are going to go vegan, what are you replacing those meals with? That's exact. That's exactly right. And just like we need exercise variation you have to do diet variation. Your body needs diet variation. You got to switch it up. Um, so the body never knows what to expect. Otherwise it will plateau. And when I was talking about the inflammation levels, it was through, um, a test that we, um, we actually offer on our website. It's called the omega three inflammation test. So you just prick your finger at home. It's super easy. You put a drop of blood on the card, send it to our lab. And it actually tells you how deficient you are in omega three fatty acids, which is literally oh. one of the most important nutrients for your brain. I mean, magnesium is the number one neuroprotector of the brain. We'll talk. Uh, we should talk more about that because that's why green leafy vegetables are critical. Um, chlorophyll okay. because they're loaded with minerals, especially magnesium. So if you're out there craving sugar, you have a massive magnesium deficiency because your body needs about 54 molecules of magnesium to neutralize only one molecule of sugar. So every time we dump sugar into the body, it's like eating away your magnesium, eating away your magnesium. So we crave oh. more sugar, we burn more sugar, we crave it again, becomes a vicious cycle. Um, but the omega-3s are one of the biggest deficiencies um, in vegans, vegetarians that we find in fish oil. Um, so when my wife became pregnant with our first, Brayden, um, she was vegan and I, and you know, I didn't make it about her or me, I made it about my son. And I'm like, listen, like the number one nutrient the baby's going to steal from you is omega-3 fatty acids. And if you're deficient, baby will be deficient. And the number one cause of postpartum depression is omega-3 deficiency. So at that point we tested her omega-3s and she was actually solid. She was, 
she, hers was better than mine, which is the funny part. She had a one to one ratio, but she still started taking it um, because we obviously knew that that Brayden, you know, in utero, um, that's the brain forms three weeks in, and now the brain directs the formation of every organ, cell, tissue in the body. And omega threes are critical. So one of the biggest deficiencies we have, I, I would say, magnesium and omega-3 fatty acids are probably the biggest deficiencies that I see with my clients in the Western Hemisphere. So if you are vegan, vegetarian, um, and you're not gonna take a fish oil supplement, then I recommend you up your chia seeds, go to like a quarter cup of chia seeds, which I love. It's like the most perfect food in the world, not yes. only because it's high in fiber, but two tablespoons of chia seeds has the same amount of omega-3 fats that you'll get in a four ounce piece of salmon. Um, I mean, it's incredible. You're getting four, um, 40% of your fiber intake from just that. And it's a great in a smoothie. It tastes good. Yeah, you could throw it, you could do it in a smoothie, which emulsifies it, or you can do my internal shower shot where you take six ounces of water, you do two tablespoons of chia seeds, one slice of lemon, and then a pinch of Himalayan salt or real salt, red and real salt, which I love. Ooh. And then what you do is you wait at least five minutes because the chia seeds are hard. They're hydrophilic, which means they're going to basically absorb up to 27 times their weight in water. So they plump up. And what happens yeah. after five minutes, or I like to give it like 10, you know, which is even better, you drink it on an empty stomach. And then Allison, those chia seeds go into all those nooks and crannies of your gut. And it's like, it's like, it's like how we brush our teeth. It's like brushing your intestines and it's gently cleansing. Um, Cause the average American has five to 15 pounds of impacted fecal matter in their gut. It's awful. And we're literally yeah. like, it's like, it's like, it's like if you like put, you know, Eddie Murphy, when he puts the, uh, the banana in a tailpipe and that movie, I forget what movie it was, Trading Places or mm -hmm. whatever it was. It's like, we're literally, we're, we're choking on our own exhaust. We're choking on our own toxicity. So this is a great way to detoxify the gut. Um, so anyway, you know, protein I'm definitely is going to try that shot. Okay. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. And, um, so protein's important, but not too much. So let's go two to four ounces per meal. That makes your protein, if you're eating animal protein, the sideshow, not the main event. And of course, there's many plant-based um, amazing sources of protein like hemp seeds and chia seeds and beans and quinoa and, and so many good things and vegetables. Um, so again, it's not just about the quantity of protein, but the quality. Um, and that's, I, I would say, is even more important because you know they're injecting hormones, vaccines, um, antibiotics. I mean, 80% of the, of the antibiotics are not sold to the pharmaceutical industry. They're sold to the livestock industry, which is crazy. Right. And that's what we're having. So indirectly, we are wrecking our gut. The number one gut destroyer is an antibiotic. It will literally wipe out your gut for two years, one round. Now, listen, yeah. antibiotics are important because they're life-saving. They've saved my life a few times before. Um, so we have to understand like what their purpose is, but they're giving out like candy these days. And, and that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. And this is where the stuff is really killing us. Wild caught salmon. They're calling it, uh, you know, um, Atlantic salmon. They're really putting pens in the Atlantic ocean where they're feeding these, uh, salmon corn and soy, which is massively inflammatory the, to the body. They're omega six fats, right? There's fats that heal like omega threes, fish oil, wild caught salmon, chia seeds, flax seeds. Then there's fats that kill. Those are the omega-6 fats, corn, soy, soybean oil, corn oil, hydrogenated vegetable fats, um, canola oil. Like these are the seed oils that are actually worse than sugar because when you consume sugar, your body's going to burn it off. Your body knows it's bad for you. So it's like, get this crap out of my body right away. But the problem right. with the seed oils, which is on all those packaged foods, is that your body can't burn them off. They have a half-life of seven years. So they go up to your brain and they're literally rusting and rotting your brain from the inside out. And that's one of the reasons one of the major causes of dementia and Alzheimer's and um, literally just a whacked out brain. Uh -huh. um, I interviewed a doctor for my book. His name is Dr. Joseph Hibbelin, and he did a study on murderers and people in insane asylums. And what he found was that they had 70, the average blood test had 70 times more of these inflammatory omega-6 fats, the fats that kill you compared to the omega-3s. And by the no way, way. Yeah, and yeah. you can test it. Oh my God. It's, it's, it's crazy. So obviously you have to worry about psychotropic drugs and all these other things that they're probably doing. But just from that standpoint of their brains are so inflamed, you can't make a rational choice or decision, you know? And that creates things like um, depression, anxiety. And if we don't change the, the cause, which is gut inflammation, leaky gut, and all the sugar and all these inflammatory bad fats, that's going to go up to your brain and that's going to make your brain just, just go crazy. And that's why kids got ADD and ADHD. It's inflammation of the brain, not a deficiency of Ritalin, which is insane. I mean, you're giving them the same class uh -huh. drug that cocaine is in. So 
Right. So let's just try to be mindful about the quality of the protein that we're getting. D is dairy. I'll keep this one quick. I mean, we're the only mammals that consume another mammal's breast milk after weaning. Cows don't even drink cow's milk. So why the hell are we doing it? It's um, disgusting and ridiculous yeah. and it's a marketing ploy. And we know that, but I didn't know that for years. I said, milk does my body good. Right. I went to, I was in North Carolina. I think my mom had multiple sclerosis, but not cancer yet. And I went to like a chiropractor and his wife did uh, applied kinesiology yep. and she tested my food allergies. And she said, oh, you have a dairy allergy. And I said, I'm sorry, what? Milk does my body good. And they laughed. They were like, oh, she's so like indoctrinated. Yeah. I didn't know what it meant. I was like, I don't know, 19, 18, something like that. And I was just like offended. And yeah. it's so funny. It's so such a far cry from where I am now. But I just say that because Dr. Daryl, I remember believing that milk did my body good. Yeah. And and why did you believe that? Because you were because told of it the a, milk message. You were you, yeah, the milk exactly. And you were told it a thousand times. Repetition is the language of the brain. Yeah. You know, the the amount of commercials that are driven into us. Literally, I mean, this is why I don't watch that stuff anymore. No, um, me either. But it's it's all subliminal, and yeah, the milk mustache. My kids have a green mustache. I love posting on Instagram. Like, here's the green mustache. My kids never had an ounce of cow's milk ever. Cow's milk is the number one allergy in children. So why are we giving it? It's yeah. It's like why not give them dog's milk? Why not give them cat's milk? I mean, so if you are, I, I realize there are some exceptions to the rule. There are some women that have challenges, and I respect that. So we have recipes from a plant base where we're using hemp and, and almonds that um, I've. I've used with tons of patients and they do great. These babies are so fat and cute. Oh, um, obviously breast milk was the, was the way that, that we chose. Yeah. And absolutely. And Dr. Daryl, I'm with you. Like, of course, breast milk, if you're capable, but obviously some women aren't. If I know right. my good friend that had breast cancer and she opted, she was young. And so she made the decision to have the mastectomy and now she can't breastfeed. So she had the child. And so she has to do formula, but she's also plant-based. So you are talking to a mostly plant-based audience. So I know we're going through a lot, but I would love for you to just tell me a little bit about the almond milk and, and the plant-based options that you were just speaking of. Yeah. I mean, you just need a blender, you know, it's, it's really easy. I try to stay away from cashews because they tend to get more moldy. Um, my favorite sources of nuts are like Brazil nuts because they're high in selenium, which is great for connective tissue, also for fighting cancer. I love macadamia nuts. So if you're out there and you're intermittent fasting, macadamia nuts are a great way to cheat your fast because they're not going to break your fast. But when it mm. comes to the nut milks, um, yeah, for, for years we would make um, uh, almond milk uh, with hemp. So we basically would take um, hemp seeds, uh, a cup of each, and, and almonds. And ideally, you know, we would... Um, I would soak them overnight. You don't need to be that crazy. You can also buy them sprouted in the grocery store to make it easy. Um, and then uh, if you're using the almonds, you have to strain it in uh, like a nut bag. But if you just if you don't use the almonds and you just use hemp milk, which by the way is an amazing source of protein, an amazing source of omega three fatty acids, um, it's it's a very healthy um, uh, source for you know the, a, a growing baby when they need it. Great. Um, I would put in like a little, um, just a small amount of um, alcohol free vanilla. Uh, maybe like a, a half of a teaspoon, and I can send the recipe over to you later. And uh, I want to drink all of this right now, and I'm not a baby. Yeah, it's so good. It's so good. And you can throw in either a date, um, or you can use some uh, non-bitterized stevia or some monk fruit, like a, a healthy sweetener. Obviously, um, not not the bad stuff. You know, um, Dave's yeah. do have some fructose, but like one date. Um, it's, it's not an issue. Um, and then you blend it all up and it's delicious, you know, and that's, that's what we use here, you know, um, and our kids love it. And so our kids never, you know, they had their first green juice at eight months old. Wow. So we were very lucky, um, or blessed to, to, that's all our kids know, you know, um, it's harder when a child, uh, is like six or seven and eight and they're kind of addicted to sugar. Like most kids are, cause kids are more addicted to sugar than adults are. It's really challenging. So, you know, you got to make it fun for kids. You know, we, we, we have the, the Vitamix out all the time and they're in the kitchen making stuff with us and they name the smoothie and then they drink it. And, you know, when we make it, stuff is getting messy and flying all over the place. And I'll never forget when we were living in New York City and Braden must have been probably like four. And you can like the parents can go in and read a book to the class. So when it was mm -hmm. our turn, we didn't bring a book in. We actually brought in a freaking juice bar and we we literally brought in a juicer and like we just had the most fun ever and we made like all these green juices for the kids and uh they were all drinking it and like we were getting calls from parents for weeks and weeks like you know our kids loved it how'd you do it so you just got to make it fun you got to get the kids involved and you got to be role models you know it's like yeah. the most important thing 
is being a role model. And if we're not doing it, how do we expect our kids to do it? And, you know, going back to your question before, which is like the most important thing, even before food, I think is your why is your purpose. It's like, I can tell you all these things, you know, amazing things to do, but if we're, if our why is not big enough, then we're not going to find that how, but once you um, know what your purpose is and once you know why you want to make a change in your health, um, and it, it could be a superficial change like weight loss, but I'm, I'm asking people to dig deeper. Like I want something that's so compelling that when you think about this thing, it's literally going to give you goosebumps. It's going to move you down to your very soul. So yes. for me, it's like, it's like how sick I was. I was 50 pounds overweight and I was the shoemaker with no shoes. I was telling, you know, my clients, I was, you know, I had a chiropractic practice in New York and I was adjusting them saying, don't have sugar, don't have sugar. I go in the back office, I drink a Coke and have a caramella bar. I was like such a contradiction, Allison. It was crazy. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, I had my son and then my daughter was born at the same time my dad was sick. And that's when I really saw the full circle of life happen. And, and now my why becomes, it's got, it's bigger than, it's way bigger than me. It's not about me. It's about this stuff we're talking about. If we can change one person's life out there today, this is worth everything that we're doing. So um, yes. what is your why? So I recommend everybody spend five minutes. Um, it's so important. This is the reason why people fail with their resolutions because January one comes, everyone's like, oh, we gotta make a resolutions. Oh, I gotta go to the gym again. I gotta give up sugar. It's all based on pain and that's not a good yeah. motivator. Maybe in the short run, it'll be a good motivator. But again, like you need that powerful why. And I think that's why January 15 comes and 92% of people fail with the resolutions because they didn't base it on a compelling change that they need to make. And when you have that compelling reason, it doesn't matter what happens. I can promise you more stress is on the way. All right. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it it, there, there'll be another pandemic. There'll be a death in the family pr trouble with, I mean, the, the stresses go on and on and on. And when we're stressed, we start stress eating. So when that happens, if you can dig into your why, and just kind of get refocused and back on purpose, then you can course correct right away. When Luca's mom was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, she ran from doctor's office to doctor's office, getting more and more prescription medicine while her health just got worse, which is exactly what happened to my mom when she first had multiple sclerosis followed by cancer. Every pill introduced a new side effect and every side effect warranted a new pill. It was a vicious cycle with no healing in sight. In Luca's case, his mom found a different route. She found a doctor who specialized in root cause medicine. After 12 months, she completely reversed her autoimmune condition. And her son Luca began to think, why isn't all of medicine this personalized and data driven? And why doesn't everyone have access to this type of information? And that's when he created Index Health. Stories like these remind me of why I do this show, Food Heals Nation, and why I love Index Health, which you can learn more about at indexclinic.com slash foodheals. With Index Health, you get access to board-certified functional medicine trained doctors and functional trained nutritionists who use advanced lab tests to diagnose and treat chronic conditions. All treatment plans are 100% personalized, and doctor appointments are one hour long. They really take the time to deep dive into their patient's health. I only wish that something like Index Health was around when my mom was sick. To schedule your first appointment, visit indexclinic.com slash foodheals. Again, that's indexclinic.com slash foodheals. Yeah. And like you and I both have very compelling whys because yours is based on your father. Mine is based on my mother and father losing their lives. And we saw that happen and we go, this is never going to happen to me. This is never going to happen to my family. This is never going to happen to my children and anyone else I can save along the way. Right. right on. And so that's really compelling. But the side effect of that was things like weight loss and clear skin and all of these things. That I was like, oh, and I look younger and I feel better, you know, than most people my age. And so even if you do take it from a more superficial approach, Fine. if you stick with it, you might discover, oh, now I get to live longer. Oh, like my friend that literally was like, I'm going to change my life and change my diet and was working with a fertility specialist, couldn't get pregnant. And all of a sudden mm. stopped doing all of the bad things and got pregnant and was like, Oh, wow. and it was just lifestyle changes. And so you may discover that when you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to do one thing, like give up dairy to get clear skin, which is what happened for me as soon as I got 
get rid of dairy. I never had a pimple again and my skin glows like right. I'm, you know, a 25 year old. But um, it. Right. And so sometimes the side effects of your why, whatever your why may be, could be a deeper or a more superficial why, but then it gives you more and more purpose and you become more and more driven to do it for yourself and do it for others and share this message, which I think you and I are both. I <laughs> love, I love that. So I love what you said so much. And I think you nailed it, which is, it's really about our epigenetics. It's like your age is just a number. It's like, we're getting yeah. older. I'm, I'm 48 now. It's like hard to even believe I'm 48, but like every year on my birthday, I test my biological age, which is my epigenetic age, which is our real age. It's based on how you eat, how you think, how you move or yeah. lack thereof for some people. And, uh, I test tested as a 32 year old, which is so cool. I'm not saying that to impress anybody, but to impress upon impressed. you, no, no, but to, to impress upon you that like what you eat is so important and more importantly, what you digest, absorb, and assimilate. Cause it's really not what you eat. It's what you digest, absorb, and assimilate. You could be on the best strength eating diet in the world, eating organic foods. But if your gut is out of balance, what we call dysbiosis and not breaking down those foods, then we get a problem. Number one, we get malnutrition, your cells, which is the most important thing because why do you look so good right now? Allison? because you're, you're nourishing your cells down to the cellular level. Think about the plant. You're giving those cells what they need to be strengthened and strong, but you're also detoxifying your body from the healthy plant-based foods that you're eating. And your body takes care of the rest. The data intelligence is always on the job. The power made the body heals the body. God heals, right? We just got to get out of the way and stop the interference from letting our body do the healing. This is why gut health is so important because, again, when we eat those foods, you got to get those foods into your cells. When we yes. eat those foods, if we're not breaking them down into those tiny particles that your gut can now take into the body, that's how food sensitivities develop. And that's why one of the tests that we do is called an MRT test. It's a, it's, it's a very simple kit we send to people. It's a blood test. And it looks at 170 different foods and chemicals. And it'll tell you, all right, without a shadow of a doubt, if you have a food sensitivity, not an allergy, right? I would know, like my niece has a peanut allergy, right? She has a peanut she goes into anaphylactic shock. We know what right. those foods are for us. But a sensitivity is a food that we're not digesting. So now, instead of your gut taking that food in for fuel to nourish your cells, it attacks it and it creates yeah. inflammation. And that could be something healthy, like an avocado, which I- It was. I was going to say that. It was avocado. I had a food sensitivity How did I know that? avocado. <laughs> I don't know. Are you psychic? I think I had maybe today. I don't know. I think, I think we had that good connection. We're kind of like- we're feeding into each other's minds right now because <laughs> we're, we're, we're in, we're in, the, we're in the, the zone, as they say. But yeah, avocado is what yeah. we call God's butter. It's the most perfect food. But again, like that was one of my food sensitivities. Garlic was one of mine. So you're telling this oh, Italian no. guy he can't have garlic for three months? Like, yes, if I want to heal my gut. But I would right. never have known that because the problem, and this is my one issue with elimination diets, is the food sensitivity, the trigger symptom, whether that's bloating, constipation, diarrhea, acid reflux, fatigue, you gain a pound that can show up three days later or in 80% of people, not at all. So I can just have my a meal right now and I can all of a sudden feel some bloating, but that actually could have been happening from something I ate three days ago. So mm -hmm. that's why I say test, don't guess, and you'll be amazed at what you find. And by the way, that test has a 94.5% sensitivity rate, which means if you have a sense, the sensitivity or the inflammation from that food, it's there. And, and Allison, you don't have to avoid that food forever. If it's a yellow food, it's three months. If it's a red food, six months. But again, it's like we, it's like the dog chasing its tail. We don't want to put those foods into the body that are driving up inflammation while we're trying to heal and seal that gut lining, right? So yep. the food sensitivities are so important to look at. And then the third thing is the stealth pathogens. And you know, going back to what I was saying before, the problem where my dad's doctor made the big mistake was it's not about too much acid in the stomach. It's about too much little acid in the stomach. And that right there is probably the most important thing I'm going to say today about the entire body. Because when Hippocrates said, look to the guts where all, the, all disease begins, it's because of low acid. And what I mean by that is as we get older, we don't get stronger, we get weaker, we don't get faster, we get slower. We don't produce more acid in the stomach, we produce less acid in the stomach. And contrary to our beliefs, because we go to the doctor, over 50% have GERD, uh, which, is, uh, which is a very uh, severe form of acid reflux. And they're going to the doctor with symptoms, which they think is of too much acid in the stomach, but it's the opposite. It's too little acid. It's contrary to like our common sense, but that's supported by 16,000 research journal articles. And what happens is with low acid, we don't digest our food. So now we get the malnourishment, we get the food sensitivities, and that 
is your first line of defense to stealth pathogens. From where? From the water we drink, from the air we breathe, from the food that we eat. We're, we're more toxic than we've ever been in human history. And you need that acid in your stomach, boom, to smash whatever it is coming through. Kill it on demand. You know, I, I was, okay. my, my wife went to Michigan and they're like kicking butt this year in football. I'm like, you want the Michigan defensive line in your stomach to block whatever it is. But if we have low acid, it becomes a free passageway for all these toxins to get through. And that's another challenge that vegans and vegetarians have. Um, they have lower levels of acid. So here's what I want vegans, vegetarians, and people that eat animal protein to do before their biggest meal of the day. And this is a little hack biohack okay. that will help you increase the stomach acid in a gentle way. You're going to take some apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. and um, let's start like with a teaspoon. Let's start easy. We'll work our way up to a tablespoon, but you do one teaspoon, dilute that in, you know, two or three ounces of water. And then you're going to drink that on an empty stomach, 20 to 30 minutes before your biggest meal of the day, which for most of us would be dinner time. And okay. what that's going to do, apple cider vinegar, like lemon water, is acidic outside the body. But once you uh, drink it and it's metabolized, it becomes very alkaline forming. It actually heals your gut. It's going to actually increase the stomach acid, which will kill stealth pathogens. It helps you digest your food. Um, and it just does so many amazing things to the digestive process. So that is a really, really good thing for people to do. If you have acid reflux, um, I would probably start at half of a teaspoon. And if that's too much for you to handle right now, you're not ready for it. You need to work with someone like me or someone else that can help you kind of calm the reflux down in a healthy way without drugs because they, they make the problem worse. Um, mm -hmm. So that would be my one caveat. If you have reflux is hold off on that one for now. There's other things that you want to do to soothe and calm the inflammation in the upper GI tract. And if you did do that and you're feeling some heartburn, Take some of my minerals, my acid kicking minerals, or you can get a little teaspoon of baking soda, mix that with water, drink that, and that'll calm it down right away. But that's a great little biohack that everybody should do every single day, um, definitely over the age of, of 2025. 20, I mean, I used to say 30, 35, but now I'm seeing this actually happen in, in kids in high school now um, because of the sugar, because of the stress, because of the drugs. It's literally depleting their acid levels in their stomach. This holiday season, give the gift of health with products that bring vitality to your loved one's lives every single day. First, check out Cure Nutrition's Rise. This is the morning companion your body craves. Rise and shine with natural energy, courtesy of the broad spectrum CBD, lion's mane, cordyceps, ginseng, and rhodiola, which are the main ingredients. Say goodbye to morning grogginess and hello to focus and productivity. It's vegan, it's gluten-free, it's the boost you need without the crash. Plus, it makes a great gift. I love getting gifts that'll make me healthier, that'll make me happier, that will make me more productive. So if you have someone in your life who's like me, this would make a great gift for them. Embrace the power of nature and CBD and visit curenutrition.com slash food heals to save 20% off. Another energy giving gift that you can sip on throughout your day, you can give to others is Organifi Red Juice. This is a caffeine free energy boost straight from nature. It's got red beet, cordyceps, and rhodiola. You can indulge in the sweet berry taste. It's high in antioxidants. It's got adaptogens. Those are the secret weapons that stabilize your energy and your mood and support your body's essential processes. With Organifi Red Juice, you'll experience sustained motivation without the jitter. So whether it's a pre-workout kick or it's a last minute rescue, this red juice is your go-to solution. You can also check out the Organifi Red travel packs. That means the energy goes with you wherever you go. That makes a great stocking stuffer as well for anyone on your list. Make your holidays vibrant. Visit OrganifiShop.com slash FoodHeals. Use the coupon code FoodHeals to save 20% off your order. Okay, so I have a question. Does the hack count or does it work if I have it every day, but I have it in a soup or salad dressing form, or does it need to be the diluted in water before we eat? Let's call the soup and the salad a bonus. It's not going to have the same effect when you have it, like I mentioned, 20 to 30 okay. minutes before the meal. But yeah, like the more the better. So I love salads with olive oil um, and apple cider vinegar or lime juice or lemon juice. I avoid regular vinegar 
because regular vinegar has too much yeast and okay. yeast is an opportunistic parasite. And it's, it's when we crave sugar, it's really the yeast in our gut that's craving the sugar. Um, so uh, coconut oil would be a good thing for that, by the way, if anyone's having any candida or, or white on their tongue or they're craving sugar as well, you need more of those healthy ketogenic fats. I'm a big fan of the plant-based ketogenic fats, avocado oil, olive oil, um, coconut oil, MCT oil, um, you know, chia seeds, hemp seeds, flax seeds, things like that. We need more fats because what they do is they slow down how these sugars get metabolized in our body. And now our body can actually start being what we call more metabolic flexible, where if we eat more healthy fats, we'll burn more fat. So it's not going to make you gain more weight. So let's not worry about that. But when we burn fat, then obviously the body tends to work better. It's a, it's a cleaner source of fuel. Okay. I love this. Okay. So going back to the apple cider vinegar, because I used to do this on a regular basis. Um, and I would take the little shot with uh, cut it with water, but then it was like, you know, it's tart. It's, it's not easy. Um, unless you love that flavor, which, which one of my good friends who was my roommate at the time back in LA loved the flavor. And I was like, this is so hard for me. She's like, I love it. And I was like, I don't understand. So I would cut it with a little bit of like, um, something sweet, like, I don't know, agave or something. Is that okay? Or is that going to, uh, dis- I'm okay. Mess it up? I'm okay with that, but agave would not be my choice because agave is 90 percent um uh has 90 percent fructose in it so you want to just avoid uh avoid that i would do something more like a uh, stevia or like a monk fruit um something that is not also going to spike your insulin levels so i think that's a better option but i love that idea yes because there are some people that really have a tough time with the apple cider vinegar it is kind of harsh um that's why we want you to dilute it with some water um, you can also do like a Swedish bitter, um, but some people don't like the taste of that either. Um, but even doing something like adding some mineral salts, you know, you can get a little Himalayan salt in a little water or some uh, of some of uh, macro minerals like magnesium and potassium and bicarbonate um, and doing that again, will have a very similar effect. Okay. I love this. I love all of the hacks. So I want to continue with hacks if you have some more for this, but I also want to ask you about overcoming sugar addiction. So you tell me, are, are, do we have some more hacks or should we go to sugar addiction? We can do whatever you like. Um, I, I think one thing I want to drive home is that we need to get more fiber in our diets. Um, I think it's such a deficiency. It's like, if you look at the four macros, so I, I called it a weapons of mass destruction diet, which most of us are eating. Well, we replace that with what I call a strength eating diet. So every time you eat, you want to put foods in the body that strengthen it, that strengthen your brain that aren't going to weaken your brain, right? That strengthen your cells, not weaken your cells. And the four macros will be your green leafy vegetables. So I want you to think green juice, green soups, uh, green smoothies, um, salads, steamed uh, veggies, uh, stir fried veggies, right? Of course you need the healthy fats. Um, avocado, we talked about being one of our favorites. The protein is the side show, not the main event. And then you want your fiber rich, slow burning carbs. And the problem with fiber is that only 5% of Americans are getting the recommended 25 to 35 grams of fiber that we need every day for healthy gut function. And I honestly think that number needs to be up in the 50 grams range, but let's just say 25 to 35, as most doctors say. Um, so we need fiber. I think that's why so many people suffer from constipation. So that internal shower shot before that helps constipation, fiber helps constipation. Um, So I want you to think things like quinoa, wild rice, sweet potatoes with coconut oil and some cinnamon, um, root vegetables, squash, like winter squash, spaghetti squash, um, yams, like more of that. And my rule for that would be half of a cup per meal, not to exceed one full cup per day. And then you're going to be getting your fiber needs, which is so important for gut function and to move the bowels. Um, Another biohack for constipation, because so many people suffer, again, 42 million Americans, and obviously most doctors are giving them laxatives, which is very dangerous. Um, This is a great uh, um, liver gallbladder cleanse, very easy to do. It's also something that's going to help you lose weight and burn fat. And um, I call, there's a million different names for it now, so I don't know what I'm calling it these days. Um, but what <laughs> you're going to do is you're going to take half of, um, you're going to take one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, and then you're going to take the juice of half of a lemon, okay. mix it together, and drink that on an empty stomach. Okay? And we can okay. call that my, uh, my acid-kicking uh, fat flusher shot, <laughs> whatever you want. But what, why don't you come up with a name for it? Whatever you call it, we'll, we'll, we'll call it that name. But um, Dr. Daryl's acid flushing shot. I've taken this before when I've been on like liver cleanses yes. and stuff, like very similar. And I've done like the olive oil flush as well when you kind of lay on your side and you wait for it to 
detox you all say until you have to go to the restroom. <laughs> yeah. And it's important because so many times when someone's constipated, it's I'm looking at inflammation in the gut is a big one. I'm looking at magnesium deficiency. So again, where's our source of magnesium? We're going to get green juices, which is the core of a strength eating diet, green smoothies. Um, so more of those greens to get the magnesium, you can do Epsom salts bath because that's magnesium sulfate. You can put magnesium lotion on your skin. So again, we need more of the magnesium and the minerals are so important. But um, another reason why we get constipated is our gallbladder tends to be sluggish because we're toxic. You know, again, we're over toxic and the gallbladder is so critical because the liver detoxes out of the gallbladder that goes into the gut. But if the gallbladder is sluggish, then we get constipated. So what this is doing, it's like a little, it's like basically squeezing all that bile when you do that shot out of the gallbladder. So now like your liver and gallbladder starts to detoxify and remember, when we're overweight, it's not a weight problem. It's an acid problem. Your body is so acidic. It's using your fat to basically encapsulate those toxins and it's storing them in what I call the acid magnets of the body, your tissues, the stomach, the butt, the bleg, you know, all of, all of our favorite places that we hate, right? So <laughs> when we get off our acid, right, I'm talking not about my stomach acid, I'm talking about the acidity in our tissues. All right, what happens from things like that shot we just talked about? What'd you call it again? The the Dr. D acid? Doctor, oh yeah, Dr. D's, um, I forgot. Acid cleansing shot, I forgot. <laughs> okay, uh, that's, that's cool. Acid or acid, yeah, that's good. All right, Dr. D's acid cleansing shot. All right, so when you do that shot, whatever you want to call it, um, it's literally detoxifying your liver, your gallbladder. Um, it's getting that bile out and it's going to help you soothe and ease that constipation, not in a bad, like, you know, laxative way, but I've had clients literally lose like one to two pounds a week from doing this. It's incredible. Why? Yeah. Because when those toxins leave the body, the fat that's attached to that toxin gets escorted out. So by detoxification, you literally are losing weight. That's the way to sustain weight loss. It's not a shot once a week and you're not changing the reason why we gained the weight in the first place. So, we stopped the shot, we gained the weight back. And now not only do we gain the weight back, but now we're pissed off and we're depressed because why am I failing? Why am I like losing this game? I was doing so well. So again, we got to look at better health by better function, by strengthening our body from the foods that we eat. That's why I love the name of your podcast. It's like genius. It's like the food that we eat are critical. And when we digest those foods properly, those foods become the nutrients that basically that replace every cell in our body and your cells are constantly replicating. Your red blood cells change every 120 days. It's incredible. Yeah. Like you can literally, your taste buds change every 14 days. So how, how, did, I, how did I overcome a severe sugar addiction in just, you know, a couple of weeks to three weeks? It's because your taste buds change. So at the beginning of that, the green juice tasted like swamp water when I started it. The salad was disgusting. But by day 14, I was like, you know what? This green juice is not that bad. Did it change like the recipe? I mean, like, no, it's the same green juice. What changed was me. And my sensitivity to the things I was eating. All right. My body started craving now the foods that were better for me and started like repelling the foods that were worse for me, like sugar foods. Okay. I want to talk about the sugar addiction and overcoming that. But first, I just have one comment to get your thoughts on. And it's one of my detox hacks. And I feel like it's something we don't talk about because people could be like, oh, that's gross. But um, this is what I do. If I have any digestive problems, which I typically don't because I have a very healthy lifestyle and I have a very, I have my health and wellness regimen, but then I travel and I get out of whack and I eat weird food in yeah. Mexico or whatever. And I come back and I'm like, oh, I'm bloated. Oh, I'm not digesting. Oh, like I don't feel right in my body, whatever. So I am a fan for detoxification in certain circumstances of colonics and enemas. What are your thoughts on that huge, for detoxification? Huge fan, huge fan. Um, the internal shower shot is going to work on the small intestine, which has like okay. the surface area of a tennis court, but the colonics is going to work on the large intestine. And that's such an important area uh, of the body. I'm a huge fan of them. I think it's necessary. Remember I said before, the average American has five to 15 pounds of impacted fecal matter. So um, it's kind of like gross when you do it because you're actually washing the tube, but it's kind of cool at the same point, same time. Yeah. Um, and same thing with enemas, you know, it's like coffee enemas. I actually like wheatgrass enemas, uh, which mm -hmm. is even more powerful than coffee. Um, if you're using a coffee enema, you got to make sure it's organic coffee. Um, super, yeah. Super. Don't put any chemicals up your bum. No, no. Yeah. So, so important. If you're drinking it as well, you got to make that coffee, what I call acid kicking coffee, but yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of those. Um, when I did my first colonic many years ago, it was actually at a Tony Robbins um, 
conference, uh, yeah, Life Mastery. Yeah. I did three in a row and mm-hmm. it was amazing. I, could fe- I felt really, really good. Now for some people that are like really, really toxic, so I would check with like your healthcare provider on it first because yeah. some people that are like really, really toxic, it might not be the best thing to do for them first. Um, you know, you got to look at the diet and all that. So someone for like you, who's healthy, like, yeah, like go for it all the time, but someone that's like just starting out and they're like kind of transitioning to this lifestyle and maybe they're overweight and they're just eating a lot of sugary foods. And, um, I would like start with that person with very gentle detoxification. I would start by doing it just by adding in foods that help their body strengthen the body. Um, not really a deprivation approach. Like the, the one thing that doesn't work with sugar addictive people like I was, um, like most of us are, because the average American is eating about 130 pounds of this white stuff every year. It's not mm-hmm. a food, it's a drug. It's become America's drug of choice. That's about 38 teaspoons a day. And after mm-hmm. six teaspoons, your liver can't metabolize it anymore. So um, so sugar is, uh, is a big problem. So you really want to address kind of the diet if you're starting out, but um, definitely move into more of these amazing things like you're talking about, Allison, which I'm a huge fan of. Yeah, absolutely. I'm all about detoxing in any way that you can, but it has to be what works for you. And of course, consulting with a doctor such as yourself to make sure it's the right path for you. But what I found, um, Dr. Daryl, is for myself, I actually have realized, and this is a self-diagnose, but I think that it is accurate, is that I do not detox as fast or as well as other people. Mm -hmm. And that's because I have always been more tired than other people. I've always um, been more bloated than other people. I've always had minor health problems that other people my age doing this, eating way worse than me didn't have. And so for me, I know I have to go above and beyond to detox where someone right next to me could eat three burgers and not get bloated. And I'm over here drinking the green juice because that's what's right for me. So I think it's figuring out what's right for you and your body. And some people need extra. And I'm one of the people that needs extra, which is why I'm so, I don't want to say crazy about this, but obsessed in in a good way, a healthy obsession with being healthy as much as I can so I can create room for my vacation. So I can create room for, like I said earlier, my wine, the things that are going to bring me enjoyment in life, a chocolate cake once in a while, whatever it might be, where other people might have more room for that. And it just is what it is. So that's why I'm a fan of all of these different forms of getting my nutrition in and detoxifying my body, whether it's sweating in a sauna, cryotherapy, yeah, um, colonics, enemas, all the things we talked about. So yeah, that's, That's my, that's, that's critical. Again, detoxification and you're right. We're all different places and you're at different places in your life. And, um, I have the MTHFR gene, which basically means that my detox pathways are a little bit impaired. So, all right, what do I do about that? It's not a big deal. I eat more cruciferous vegetables. I take, um, a supplement, uh, a methylated B supplement that helps my detoxification pathways become more open. And I, like you have to work a little bit harder. I got hit with severe mold toxicity when we had our two year stint in Newport beach and I almost died. Um, it was, Oh, oh, it was, it was, it was horrific. And you know, I'm, I'm still, you know, dealing with it. I'm, I'm a thousand times better, but like mold is, is one of the biggest forms of stealth pathogens because you can't see it. You can't see it on the walls. Most of us think of black mold. It's on the walls. You see it, but no, it was hidden in our house. So for me, detoxification sometimes Allison has to be like, I'm all about finding your balance, like 80, 20 or, you know, 70, 30 for some people, 90, 10, but there are some times in your life that you might have to go hundred percent. And for me, when I got hit with all this mold toxicity, me and my son really felt it because we had more genetic predisposition to it, um, compared to my wife and my daughter. Um, but we got hit hard and he started getting neurologic ticks. And for me, I, I lost a ton of weight. Um, and thank God I know what I know. And I started testing and investigating and I figured it out, um, because you're in a house where you can't see it. You can't smell it, you know, and you start getting brain fog and sinus issues. What would make you think of mold when it mimics so many other things? So as a biologic doctor, biologic medicine, sometimes we don't know what's causing the problem. And when you don't know what's causing the problem, I'm sure there's a lot of people listening to this now that are so frustrated. Who's been to like 10 different doctors, like Allison, when people come to consult me, like there's, I'm sometimes the 10th doctor, like I'm the 10th yeah. person they're seeing. And, and I had this uh, poor girl, Melissa, not poor anymore. Cause she's thriving and doing amazing. We, yeah. um, she came to me and was crying and she's like, Dr. Daryl, you're my last hope. I've, I've seen 10 different doctors. I've been on 80 milligrams of omeprazole for over five years. I spent thousands and thousands of dollars and I'm getting sicker, not better. 
She was literally getting ulcers in her throat, her mouth. Um, she couldn't sleep because her ear pain was so bad from the reflux coming up from her gut. And no one tested her gut. And when I tested her gut, I'm like, the first thing, I'm like, we're testing your gut. We're not going to guess about this. We're going we're gonna to know without a shadow of a doubt, instead of throwing darts in the dark, with the, which is what these doctors have been doing with me for the past five years, I tested her. And one of her inflammation markers called calprotectin was 647, no, 687. To put that into perspective, that number should, ne it should be ideally zero. It should never be above 50. And it's like the gold standard for IBS. And when it's that elevated, we see that in like clients that have like colorectal cancer. And of course, I didn't tell her that it was the worst number I've ever seen in the thousands of tests that I've seen because I don't want to scare her. But I wasn't, right. I wasn't scared, Allison, because I knew I found the cause. And when you find the cause, you could put together a laser-focused protocol based on the right foods, based on the right supplements, and based on managing stress and doing some bio, some biohacking, very easy things to do at home that will turn this slow ship around. It doesn't change overnight. Like drugs are designed to change overnight, but they're not changing your function. They're maybe changing how you feel, if that. Um, so we took the, the real approach, which is we're going to fix this problem and we're going to test along the way. So the second test four months down the road, she was better. She wasn't out of the woods, but her symptoms were going in the right direction. Finally, her calprotectin number was coming down. Then I retested her at eight months and get this. Not only was she off of 80 milligrams of omeprazole, off of all drugs, 100% symptomatic free. She had that life and joy back in. She's laughing and smiling. Her calprotectin levels were zero. It's incredible. Wow. So again, look to the gut. It's the cause of all disease. Any weird stuff you think is going on as a biologic doctor, going back to what I was saying, sometimes you don't know what the cause is. So test the body. And if you, if you don't have the means to test, just start putting in the right foods. But Sometimes we got to go 100%. And yeah. for me, I didn't know at first what was causing all my symptoms. So I said, all right, I got to I gotta dial down my diet even more so than what I'm doing. I'm going from 80, 90, 90% to 100%. And I got to get the right supplements based on what my body and my testing showing. And I got to do more stuff for the stress and blah, 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 blah. And so I just did that. And what I found was it did the trick. My body healed itself. Your body yeah. will heal itself, everybody. It will. But you got to think about that plant. If that plant wilts, we're no different. Give it what it needs and then take out the toxins. And if you do those two things, and if it's not too far gone, just like the plant will heal itself, your body will heal itself. Yes, your body will heal itself when given the tools it needs to do so. So Dr. Daryl has given us so many tools today, and I'm so grateful. And this has been such an amazing conversation. And I actually have a bunch more questions for you. So I'm going to see if you can either stick around or come back because I'm not done here. Let's go, you, Dr. Daryl. Let's do it. Let's keep going. Food Heals Nation, did you know that Americans spend an average of 90% of their time indoors and take about 20,000 breaths per day? According to the EPA, indoor air is two to five times more polluted than outdoor air, and in some cases, this is scary, up to 100 times more polluted. The data shows that air pollution is responsible for nearly 7 million premature deaths globally. That's why it's so important to filter the air in our homes. You remember my story after discovering toxic mold in my home almost a year ago, I realized the importance of having multiple high quality air filters in my home to protect myself, to protect the air that I'm breathing and the air that my beagle lily is breathing. Think about everyone in your household, your family members, your roommates, your kids, your cats, your dogs, your pets right? We have to be so conscious of the air that we're breathing inside. But that's why I'm obsessed with Air Doctor. You can visit airdoctorpro.com, use the code FOODHEALS, and you can get up to 39% off an air purifier. Air Doctor filters out 99.99% of dangerous contaminants and allergens like pollen and pet dander and dust mites and mold and even bacteria and viruses. So your lungs don't have to. It's so easy to set up. It's quiet and I can rest easy knowing I'm breathing cleaner air every day when I'm working from home. If you work from home like me, you've got to filter your air. 
So head on over to airdoctorpro.com, use the promo code FOODHEALS, and depending on the model you pick, you'll receive up to 39% off or up to $300 off. This is exclusive to Food Heals Nation listeners. You'll also receive a free three-year warranty on any unit, which is an additional $84 value. Check it out by going to A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O.com, airdoctorpro.com, and use promo code FOODHEALS. Food Heals Nation, if you're like me, you know that drinking enough water is imperative for our hydration and our detox. And I personally try to drink half my body weight in ounces of water per day. But have you thought about the quality of water that you are drinking? So according to the Environmental Working Group, virtually every home in the U.S. has harmful contaminants in its tap water. So ditch the tap water, ditch the cheap water filters, and check out my favorite water purifier company, AquaTrue. You can visit AquaTrue.com, use the coupon code FOODHEALS for 20% off any AquaTrue purifier. AquaTrue purifiers use a four-stage reverse osmosis purification process, and their countertop purifiers work with no insulation, no plumbing. I set it up myself, don't worry, it's easy. It removes 15 times more contaminants than ordinary pitcher filters and are specifically designed to combat chemicals like PFAs in our water supply. The filters are affordable and long lasting, no changing filters every two to three months. AquaTrue filters last from six months up to two years. AquaTrue comes with a 30 day money back guarantee and even makes a great gift. Today, my listeners will receive 20% off any AquaTrue purifier. Just go to AquaTrue.com, that's A Q U A T R U.com, and enter the code FOODHEALS at checkout. That's 20% off any AquaTrue water purifier when you go to AquaTrue.com and use code FOODHEALS. All right. Well, as you heard, I didn't get to all my questions and luckily we were both each other's last appointments of the day. So I asked Dr. Daryl to hang out a bit longer and answer some of my burning questions. So stay tuned for part two of my interview with Dr. Daryl on the next episode of Food Heals, where we will cover mold toxicity, the sick care model versus the holistic health care model, why insulin is the hormone that ages us, alternatives to sugar from a former sugar addict, and so much more. To learn more about Dr. Daryl right now, you can go to getoffyouracid.com. And of course, you can follow him on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Get Off Your Acid. See you next time, Food Heals Nation. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately.